Welcome to Ava Gallery and Art Center. I'm Sam Eckert, Exhibition Manager, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us for this very special event, which coincides with Ava's 50th anniversary year. Before we get started with the panel discussion, please welcome Sherry Borez, Ava's Executive Director. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad you're here tonight. Um, as, as Sam said, I'm Sherry Borez, the Executive Director for Ava Gallery and Art Center. We're very excited and honored to that ch our, our longtime champions, John Stomberg, Director of uh, Dartmouth College's Hood Museum of Art, has curated this very deep and meaningful exhibit that's so uplifting. Um, I thank the artists, Sachi Akima, Akiyama, Chris Chow, Kayla Mohammadi and Tom Fells for, for, for sharing this. I mean, what a wonderful February, what a wonderful uplifting show for this time of year. So thank you. We also offer thanks to Sam, our exhibition manager, for coordinating all the moving parts involved with today's event. And It was a yo woman's effort. There's no doubt about it. At a community nonprofits organization like Ava, the collective hands of many are needed to execute an event like this. And so we are so grateful for all of the volunteers who are helping us tonight and the entire staff who pitched in. As you may know, as Sam mentioned, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year in 2023. Um, and our capital campaign is titled From Seed to Bloom. And it not only refers to our beginnings as a seedling, um, but to now and our future. This campaign name suggests that the importance and necessity of nurturing all that Ava has grown to offer and has the potential to become. Um, we, also, we offer art education for children and adults, art exhibitions and events like this one, as well as several free community art making programs. To celebrate this important milestone, Ava will be having several events throughout the year that we hope that you'll consider attending. The first one up is called Bloom, our exhibition and auction, which is going to take place. It's going to culminate on April 28th, but it's, we're going to have our auction, a silent auction set up and open from April 14th through the 28th. And then there will be a party on April 28th where we will have the end of the silent auction and a live auction. So I hope you'll be able to join us for that. Ava relies on the support of people like you. There are a variety of ways that you can help, such as making a financial contribution, becoming a member, taking classes, or joining us for all these kinds of events. Um, in return, we freely offer you a sanctuary to enjoy art and to get together with your friends and the community. Without further ado, I will reintroduce Sam. Thank you. Hello again. Thank you, Sherry. <clears throat> About a year and a half ago, John Stomberg asked me if Ava would be interested in his curating an exhibition in celebration of Ava's 50th year. Of course, I said, heck yeah. <laughs> he asked me, which galleries? And I replied, all of them. <laughs> and now here we are surrounded by these vibrant works of art in two exhibitions by four exceptional artists. We owe John Stomberg a big thank you for donating his time and expertise to Ava. Thank you, John, for your, for your generous and graciously curating these exhibitions. I'd like to acknowledge the Mount Rushmore Foundation. Thank you, Linda and Rick Rush, for your ongoing support, generous support of Ava and these joyful exhibitions.
Additional thanks to the Clifford B. West Fund and the Hilton Garden Inn. Many thanks to my friends on staff, volunteers, and AVA board members for lending a hand today, Alan, Glennis. <laughs> Special thanks to Ava's installation team, exhibition assistant Harrison Halaska, who's not here, <laughs> and Nina Patrick, and, uh, Ava's intern from Bennington College. Tonight, the panel is focused on the exhibition From the Heart. Our second event, a conversation with Tom Fells and John Stomberg, will be held here at Ava on Saturday, March 11th at 2 p.m. An arts nonprofit organization is dependent on the people, those of the community, donors, volunteers, and staff, all those who are dedicated to the arts and supporting artists. This kind of energy comes from the heart. Quoting from John's curatorial statement, these works in the exhibition appeal to the heart, which is a shorthand explanation of emotions that we feel absolutely but recognize that a manner different than the way we process other information. This may seem an unsurprising framework for an exhibition, but art as practiced by Akiyama, Chu, and Mahamani stands out today for its faith and our emotional intelligence and our desire to connect directly with one another through art. It's my honor and great pleasure to introduce the artists and the exhibition from the heart, Sachiko Akiyama, Chris Chu, and Kayla Mahamadi. And our esteemed guest curator, please join me in welcoming John R. Stomberg, Virginia Rice Kelsey, 1961 S, Director of the Hood Museum of Art, Dartmouth College. Thank you for that, Sam. Um, Sam and I have a very good working relationship, and it was a, it was a pleasure to work here. Um, you know, I think that the, uh, the, the, the gratitude that you just showed to Rick and Linda are one of the reasons why I love Ava so much, because, you know, just so, it, you know, you know, if you are the president of a major international global conglomerate, we'd be happy to have your support. But right now, we've got Rick and Linda. <laughs> You know, and you know them, they live up the street, and they help us out all the time. It's just amazing. Uh, so I always think of this place as a place uh, dedicated to love, and uh, that's why I did the show. Um, so we're going to ask questions and talk about them, but I thought I'd just start with, with a few words about the show. Um, you know, in our contemporary art world today, there's a lot of artworks that have to do with engagements of a political or social manner. Uh, which are very important and, and always something that we want to get back to. But it's, it is also refreshing to follow along in a more poetic tradition, a tradition that involves emotions, allusion, uh, ideas that are related to color, thought, form, texture. Um, and so I thought I would just love to indulge myself and um, doing a show of not dead gorgeous artworks that were really, really uh, made from the heart. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm still incredibly honored that these three amazing artists allowed me to work with them and bring them in um, here. Um, so I've got some deeply penetrating, theoretically entrenched questions to, to start with. So, Chris. Yes. What is it about red? <laughs> oh, I have a mic. Well, I thought I have to, we have to switch seats. No, no, you go. No. Okay. Good. I'm good. I love red because every time I draw my blood, when I see doctor, I just amaze the colors so beautiful. Just like a movie. So color, uh, red for me is a life, is an energy. It's a power. So I love red. <clears throat> Besides, red is very expensive. <laughs> Academy red, so expensive. So I just want to put my best in my painting. So even I, I'm not reaching my pocket, but I want to do my best. So 
I pay red. <laughs> and also, I, re I like red dots. Yes, especially the symbolic meanings when, when the art is so, you put red dots on. So that's, that's very important too. So, uh, like everything together, no matter in which way, red is beautiful. That's how I love red. So I have an equally entrenched question for Kayla. Uh, what is it about blue? I don't know if I can follow it. Not sorry. <laughs> we should have gone first. Um, yeah, for me, blue has always been the more peaceful and like beautiful color. I feel like you can't never do wrong with blue. In a way, it's almost like an easy um, color to work with. And there's so many variations of blue. Um, I usually, I love working with blue, but you can see actually I've tried working with other colors. Yes. It's really just to challenge myself because I feel like, oh, I feel like I have blue, I understand blue, but I want to understand some of the other colors as well. Um, but yeah, but I think if my go-to is blue, I really probably should just be doing it. If I just if I only had blue, I would be happy. And you can take red. <laughs> I love all colors. <laughs> so those, are, those two questions really did come because when I just think about the show, I think, I, and I think about Chris's work, I'm like, wow, it's a little red. And when I think about my studio business, my time with Kayla, I'm like, there's a lot of blue. Obviously, it's not exclusive. Uh, in the same way that, that Sachi works in a lot of media, but really, Sachi, what is it about wood? I get asked this question a lot. I use a lot of materials, but I'm always drawn from wood. And I actually asked my parents for wood tools in kindergarten. And so I had, I had still have my tiny hammer, a little saw, and I used to make birds and horses. I would nail them together. And I, as an adult and as an artist, I continue to be drawn to this material. And I think it's because it's alive, and you sense that warmth of the material. And I've mostly carved with wood now, and I like that process of uncovering things and leaving the mark, the carving marks, and so you can feel, it's like looking at a drawing, looking at all the marks of the drawing, and you get a sense of time, or something being uncovered. That's wonderful. Thank you. Why don't you hold the mic for okay. backwards? Oh, great, okay. Uh, and of course, that means that now that I'm gonna ask the tough questions, <laughs> you're on the hook. Not really. Um, I just was wondering if you could think out loud a little bit mm -hmm. with us about being asked to be in a show called From the Heart, and how you responded originally, and how you feel about it now. And it's not, I'm not like looking for compliments on the title, but just like the subject, the idea. Like how do you feel you might fit or not fit into those? Well, when John asked me to be a part of the show, there's no way I would have said, I jumped at the opportunity, I was really excited. Um, the title from the heart actually made me a little nervous because I think I tend to be a little bit more private about things. And I definitely, like that is, a big part of my motivation when I make the work, but I think I want it just to be a very quiet way of doing it. And I always talk about Egyptian sculpture. That's always my, my favorite, when you sense just the power and the meaning in this work, but it feels very quiet at the same time. It's not showy in any way. Um, so it's it's tough to me. But I think it's this is good like therapy, art therapy, to <laughs> just be open about what I'm doing, <laughs> embrace it. Yeah. Because your, your work does seem to have a kind of inward turning quiet about it. And so that when I start thinking about interiority, I think about things like metaphorically the heart, right? As exposed as opposed to exteriority and you know being whatever that is, but it's not only really what we think of the heart. And that's one of the right realms I think that you operate in is this very sincere uh, I think yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think I get nervous too, just because it seems like such a big a goal or thing to attain that it's, it's, I almost get like embarrassed to say that that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah. No, I will say that one of my goals with this show and that was, was to get at this idea that sincerity no longer has a place in contemporary art. And I, I just don't believe it. Yeah. Anyhow, so can we ask Kayla the same question? Yeah, when you asked, um, you know, in regard to the title, I remember in graduate school, I had a crit and somebody said my work was very honest. 
And I remember at first not knowing if that was like a good thing or not, or if they were just saying it because they weren't really connecting with the work, but it was honest. But then I decided like, actually, that's a really nice thing to, to be honest with your work, to be truthful, to sort of try to get at something that has meaning. So when you pose that question, um, you know, I was, you know, very happy to be part of, of the show and, and, um, and, but you're right though, it's not kind of in, in style right now. Um, but, yeah. but darn good art. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say darn, but I cleaned it up. <laughs> okay, I l like, no, I should say, I love this title uh, because heart is very important. You, if you want to have a good life, you need to keep your heart pure and uh, simple. Of course, you have a complicated uh, head, but keep your heart simple. And uh, I see things kind of very direct. So I believe it's from my heart. So uh, if I'm not touched by myself, I cannot move, move you or myself. It's not, like you say, not honest. So I won't be <clears throat> very sincere. So I think people are smart. They know your heart. I mean, for in some, some way, they can find out. So especially painting, when you paint, you just naked show yourself to, to, the, to the public. So we have to from our heart. Otherwise, it's no meaning. I like this title. <laughs> Thank you. So we can go home now. Um, they've, they validated my title choice, so I'm done here. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, and you know, Kayla, I think it's true. I think that your, your work does feel honest. And as a person who spends a very lot of time looking at art all over the place, I can tell you a lot of times people are learning how to make stuff that looks a lot like art. And then people say, well, what does that mean? How can you tell? And I'm like, I feel it. You know, like it's either there or it's not there. And, you know, um, I, I just don't know how else to put it. And uh, I think that that's one of the things that drew me to this idea was that here are three really towering emotional geniuses uh, sharing their artwork with us. And I really do appreciate it. Um, so I want to keep going on this kind of nice sentimental sappy tone. Um, studio practice is, is kind of quiet and, and intimate. And yet, you know, you share your art, you bring it out here. And I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about what it's like for you to take something as meaningful and as heartfelt. You were saying like, you, you, you know, you were almost kind of naked, right? You're just, you really mean these things. And putting them in a gallery and, and letting all of us look at them. So what's that experience like? Actually, we should start with you this time. You haven't been first yet. No, yes, I'm going to be mean. I'm trying to just mix it up. Okay. Um, Do you want Crystal I, first? Yeah, well, okay. I can't, well, yeah, like Crystal. <laughs> okay. She, she, she could answer for me. I, oh, I have to think about question. So I enjoy studio time. I enjoy by myself alone. That's the best time. So um, when I do my art, I think it's, just when the time is up, come out, you have to, um, well, how to say, you celebrate your peace with people. So you have to share. Sometimes it's so private, you don't want to, you want to keep this peace. That's another story. But most of the time, you want to uh, use this to celebrate, like to, 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 to communicate people. By this you mean the show? You want to use the show to communicate? Yeah, okay. because uh, you want to share. And uh, I'm not in therapy, this area, but I think I wish my work can comfort people's heart. Yeah, so because nowadays it's so chaos, right? We need a good art. We need a good... Uh, how to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that means uh, next one. Yeah. So, thank, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, just one quick follow-up for Chris. 
Do you have any works that you've ever made that you felt were too personal that you didn't want to share them? Yeah, at my, in my home. Yeah. It's one is talking about my father and me, small melon and big melon. Yeah. And another is a bird, is my mother. Uh, another, <laughs> another is a monk, mm -hmm. is a, my uncle. Yeah, different phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I, won't, I won't let them go out. They will stay with me. Well, I remember in school having a professor say that everyone, all artists need an audience. And even when you, being a student, he was so great that he brought our work down to the cafeteria or the cafe that was at the basement of our art school. And it was just nice to see it out of, you know, we painted these paintings and then brought it downstairs and you get a coffee and you got to look at it with other people. So I do like, I actually, I, I love having it get out of the studio and have them have like this great light great walls, you know, my studio doesn't look anything like this. It just, it, it, they feel kind of sp spiffed up. Like we got, we got a little dressed <laughs> up uh, today too. So um, no, I love having it out and I love having an audience and I love being able to, for it to have a conversation with people who see, t t people who see the work and also with each other in a different way. And actually what's so nice about having John curate or anybody who curates too, just to see their vision of how, like, I wouldn't have put that with that, but I, I like it. I mean, I like the way that, that the work is set out. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. So, no, I think it's great to get out of the studio, and I love um, that other people can see it and get um, reactions, too. I always feel like when I'm making work that, well, it's very personal, but it's almost like raising, I don't have kids, but it feels like, I'm raising a kid and then I send it off to college and I have no control over it. <laughs> you have all the control in the world in the studio, but then it's actually really exciting to me to see it have its own life outside the studio. So like what Kayla said, how John curates things and put the three of us together and I can see it in a new context or I love talking to people. I get surprised by what the pieces actually do. I, I have my own intentions, what I think I'm putting into it, but a lot of times, other things are happening that I don't even realize. And it's, I think it's helpful to get it out of the studio to discover what, what these pieces do without me. Yeah, I, I just would, I, I imagine in, so I emotionally like enter your mind and think, this is scary. You know, like when you're in your studio, it looks perfect. And then when it's out in the world, you begin to have all these different associations. And, and then I take it, I mix it up in a way that you're not used to. And I put you all three together. And you know, like it just struck me as like, wow, that's a big transition to go from your studio out here. And they always tell artists, you know, everybody out, you know, all of the, all of our experts, all of us experts, always tell artists, you gotta let go, you know, you you paint it, then you let go. But I don't think you do really. I don't think that somehow you hold on to pieces of this. And I've seen artists walk into the museum who have a piece there and go, oh yeah, this piece. That was the summer when, you know, and you can see they're still connected. You know, this has not been like they have not just sent this kid off to college without a couple of care packages of brownies swallowing, you know what I mean? So, uh, so I got to know these guys when they were MFA students, and it was a very exhaustive program. Uh, the, the, the faculty members were super demanding. Uh, they were expected to work about 80 hours a day on their, their work. Um, so I just thought, while well, you still have the microphone, could you talk a little bit about what it's like to get an MFA? and how it changed, and are there lessons you learned during that process that you carry with you today? Wow. That's such Remember, a big question. Remember, a lot of artists out here who were thinking these yeah. thoughts. So. I didn't study a lot of art in my undergrad, and then I did a post-baccalaureate program, which is where I first started to learn how to have a studio practice. And I think the intensity of BU was really helpful for me just to be surrounded by all these artists like Chris and Kayla, um, where am I going with this? <laughs> you were going to say, God, John. Right. I think that's where she's going. You were going to talk about MFA program. Okay. Do you still have that? Do you still have lessons that you are, are part of your life? Or what was it like to, to spend what, 10 hours a day focus on your art? Oh, gosh, it's such a gift to do that. And then also to have a, the artist community, too. 
I think, so now I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I have a lot of artist friends, but it's not the same as going to school every single day, all day. And I remember when we'd get locked out of the building, we knew how to crawl into the basement window to get to our studio. And, Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a thing? There's a snowstorm and we all slept in our studios. There's just this wonderful intensity to the program and you just get, it helps you grow so much in such a short amount of time. And I really feel like it set the foundation for what I've been making for 20 years now, really. And then also it's nice, like I've been in touch with Kayla a lot and of our, our other classmates. I think the, co the conversation continues, which is really helpful. Yeah, I've actually heard that before. Uh, I'll comment on what you guys are all going to comment. Yeah, and just to, no um, to note that, you know, the three of us, yeah, we were at school at the same time. We overlapped with Chris. And, you know, that was about um, 23 years ago. And John... Awesome. Uh, the two of us worked for John at the gallery. Um, so it was, yeah, wonderful memories. But I went to MFA, I mean, uh, basically what, to piggyback on what Sachi said, um, it was to have this experience of being a full-time artist, basically, because at the time I had gotten to undergrad, and then I was working and then going into a very small studio space that I rented, um, and I felt that I really needed that next level, that next push. So I, I uh, for me, I think I really recommend it. And then to, and then the people that we met, um, or that I met, that I just think it was incredible. I mean, I learned so much from both of these artists and from John. But I remember, actually, Chris was one of the reasons I went to BU, because I went to her studio, and you were painting a pineapple. <laughs> and it didn't look like a pineapple. I'm like, oh, I met this artist who was painting a pineapple, but it didn't look like a pineapple. But it had a great color and mark, and it was so fresh, and I was like, that's where I'm, that's where I'm gonna go to school. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I know this first time. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know the pineapple story, yeah. but thank you. Yeah. And uh, oh, when I was in BU, that two, uh, two years program, I worked 12 hours a day. No, maybe sometimes more. I cook three meals in my studio. It's <laughs> illegal. One time I came over for a crit, and she made me lunch, and I thought, PB and J? Uh-uh. No, she made chicken, rice, vegetables, in her studio on a hot pot. Do you remember that? You made this beautiful lunch. Hey. Okay. Yeah. I make tea for you. Yes, <clears throat> so the, when John, uh, our teacher, comes, what's that smell? I, I told him, that's a good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's a frozen dumpling. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's yeah. too much. Okay, uh, that's, I, I think my highlight, that's my highlight in BU, at BU. Yeah, I really enjoy that, that time. Uh, but nowadays I wish I can go back to that kind of energy, but no way. If six hours, I feel satisfied. But before 12 hours, nothing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because that's young, younger, and I paint bigger. Now I become smaller, <laughs> yeah. So I reduce the size a little bit. And uh, I think um, the most important things, in that two years studio time, I find my uh, vocabulary. I use my vocabulary to tell my personal story. So that's, that's wonderful. And I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful for that time. Um, I just work at a studio. So many people go out and have a beer in the nighttime. I don't, I don't have any peer pressure. I just paint in my studio. So some people say, oh, you make us ugly. Yeah, but I don't care. I just love paint. So studio time, the best time. Mm. So uh, this, is, this is not the first time I've heard this, that in the, in the process of going through your graduate work, you're just like, oh my God, I'm working so hard. But then later on, it's like, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> I had all this time, and there's often a kind of informal pact to be honest with one another. And that's the hardest thing in the world to find when you're starting off in art. Because everybody's like, oh, you're great, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's wonderful. And 
you know, maybe sometimes that's true, but a lot of times what you really want is like, does the green work? Is this too, is this line too bold, you know? What do you think? And that kind of camaraderie uh, in that process is really, really important. And I think that's the, the secret sauce of, of an F MFA program. Yes, the professors are there. Yes, you know, maybe you're doing TA work and stuff like that, but it's each other and you're going through this time together. And it's just remarkable. And I can testify that the voices that they discovered in their time in graduate school is still recognizable to me today, absolutely, uh, in your work, um, and it's very strong. Um, so now let's lighten it up. That was, well, we got really heavy. Um, <laughs> no. uh, I was just going to say, so <clears throat> the curator calls you up and says, I want to do a show. And so what do you want out of a show? Like, I know what I want out of the show, and I can tell you. But what did you guys want to get out of being part of the show? Or what did you not want? How about, what did you hope for? What do you, what do you hope for when you have a show? Other than red dots. <laughs> well, the red dots are good. Because some of my friends came today, they say, oh, your work looks very different. I say, because in my studio is a dirty floor and a very messy wall. So I think it's, I, I have to give them a place to have a nice clean wall to see. Uh, I want to talk to my paintings and say thank you. I, I appreciate you being with me. <clears throat> oh, my voice because I want to cough but I swallow it. So that's why I'm making my, my voice very funny. But I don't, I, please don't mind, okay. Then uh, I also I know this show when you put on the wall is different. Just like um, uh, still you, but you are in different maybe different dress or different, but still you. But maybe it's different look. So you give the chance to let your painting to speak more to others people, and also myself. So I really uh, appreciate the chance. Otherwise, your painting always in your, <laughs> your studio corner, right? So kind of, um, maybe, maybe they are happy too, but, uh, but it's happier, maybe happy, I don't know. But just let them face to uh, new friends, yeah. Hopefully they can find a family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Chris, Chris yeah. is putting her, her paintings up for adoption here tonight. Yes. No, because because you want to you no, want to seriously. you want to invite. Yeah, you want to invite this kind of uh, love of friends. Yeah. yeah, to another new home. It's about the time. <laughs> Was it a failure to launch? <laughs> no, I still want to say a lot of things, but uh, I think, uh, no, I mean to the painting. Oh, but but I, I, I just, you know, I have to, yeah, support, support myself. Also give joy to yeah. other place. So it's a, it's a yeah. That's a win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we share, right? Um, I think the one thing I look at uh, is validation too. When you sometimes you're not so sure about a painting or if it's working, or and then you'll see it out in a space and you're like, actually, yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, even if it's a little bit weird or off or raw um, or something, I do like it when something's not quite right too. But if it if sort of can stand on its own and it's outside in a space, um, I guess I guess it is that validation. Like, yeah, that's. It's, sta it's standing on its own too, as, uh, as well as with other artists and in this space. So I think I look at that. I think there's something nice about being in an art center. It's like, I actually don't feel the pressure like it, you're gonna have to sell these, this work. So it's really nice. I don't feel the pressure on myself too. And I don't, you know, and I just feel like it's so, it's so nice to have this in the community. You can come, you can look at art, talk about the work and um, not, have that, not have that pressure actually. 
I love being able to show work. I just feel so grateful that whenever I get an opportunity like this, I think it helps me see the work differently, and then I get to meet people, too, and talk about it. Um, I don't think I would be happy if I just made work and no one ever saw it. Like, I would be happy to, up to a point, but I think, like, the next step of the process for me is to be able to be a part of this bigger conversation. And so being in the show has been really wonderful to see the how you arrange stuff and that you brought the three of us together. That's... Thank you. Um, so before we turn it over to questions, which we're going to do now, so think of your great questions. Um, so what I, what I was thinking about, my hopes for this show, uh, was exactly that, to, to finish that connection between art and people. Because that's really the hope for me. It's like it's wonderful to have a work of art, but if it's all by itself on a, an island somewhere, I don't know what kind of life it has. And I believe, and this sounds new agey, but I believe art has a kind of life of its own. And that when we in, in, encounter it, we connect it with the artwork, which is an extension of a person, a soul, and a group of ideas, fears, hopes, and we have all of that when we connect with artwork. And one of the reasons why I so love Ava is that it's embedded deeply in a community of people. And here, artists can come and see each other's work, and people who are arts uh, inclined, who want us to get together and see works of art, have that kind of experience in their daily life. And uh, I had a, an email this afternoon from a high schooler uh, who has taken classes here, and she read the story in the newspaper, and she was telling me how much Ava meant to her as growing up in the neighborhood and studying art and being part of this community. And I was just bowled over. It was like, I just wanted to close up and shop for the day. Like, that's it, right? It does not get any better than that. And that's what this, this place is about. So I was honestly hoping, my hopes for this show, were to bring in three artists whose work for Tom, four artists. So we have Tom Fell's show separate because it, it was just a different thing. And so we did a one-person show for Tom. But all these artists make art of kind of raw power. And for me, that is the hope for the future, is that through empathy, you know, we get to know people. And when you get to know people, you can't hate them. And so that's what this does, is it brings love into our community in a way that's acceptable. Going to an art gallery is a totally acceptable way of sharing love, right? But that's exactly what it does. So. From the heart, thank you to all three of you for being part of this show. Thank you, John. We're open for questions. We're open for business. Yes, ma'am. I'm much. Hi. I'm much more comfortable with the medium of words, of writing, and when I'm writing a short story, sometimes the the, the feeling or the idea that I want to express is right there and I just launch into it. How are you inspired with your pieces to start a new piece? And I'm just so curious about the whole process of art because I'm not an artist. I don't know if you can paint over a painting that you don't like or if you start it and you just kind of don't like the direction it's going in. Do you just, can you kind of tweak it to get to where you're going? Or what is that process of creation? The first. Uh, you mean how we started with the painting? Yeah. I think it's, it's just like a wind blow. You know, you don't know the where they come from, but you 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 know you know uh, when when the idea or your inspiration come in, you listen to them and. Uh, you uh, let them speak their words, then gradually they come out. So it's, it's uh, I, I, I'm not a writer, but sometimes I write some poetry, but it's, it's so, I mean, my painting is no grammar. So you just like a jazz, like spontaneously, here note, here note, and they, they will play together. 
So it's hard to explain because it's part of your, 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 your whole body. Because for, for me, uh, writing like exercise, but painting for me is breathing. It's so natural. So I, I, I forgot how to start it. Just, just you have an idea. For example, the COVID. I got COVID last year, December 1st. Then I, mean, I was miserable. Then after that, I say, I have to make a painting. So I made a COVID painting from positive to negative. So I made one painting of all that. Then in the beginning, I just draw the symbol. Then I put a number. Then I do the color, then finish. So it, it's just very naturally come out. So just like uh, maybe you write your story, you think about it, just gradually here and there. You made a bubble first. You think about this, 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 then you connect them. Then make a painting, oh, no, I mean, make an article or something. Yeah, it's very abstract, but that's real. For me, I just need to um, start with drawing. I think it's a lot similar to writing, actually, just like, just to get something down on paper, and then that sort of leads to something else, which leads to something else. For me, I think collage is a big part of my process, too. And there is no collage on any of these paintings, but I have done that. But I, a lot of times, the drawings and collage will just help me in, in, in doing the paintings. Like that image there with this fruit bowl, I mean, that came out of a collage, a collage idea that I just sort of put up with these circles of cut out paper. Um, so that, so I, I need to start with something. So I don't just land on any of these ideas. They come from drawing or collage or something like that, usually on paper, and then that'll spring an idea. I wish it was as natural for me as it is for Chris. <laughs> I think I'm a little more tortured in the studio. <laughs> but I, like Kayla, I do draw a lot. Uh, I tend not to show my drawings, but I feel like that's a place where I can just, you can try out things really quickly and easily. Um, I also like to read a lot too. Um, I think it just gives me ideas of how to look at things differently. Like for a while, I had a residency out in, um, I'm totally blanking, um, Wyoming? No, you cross? Yeah, you, you cross Wyoming? Yeah, Wyoming. Um, and I was interested in all the mountains, so I ordered a book from Amazon about how mountains are formed. And it doesn't directly feed into my work, but it helps me start to think about things in different ways. Um, I also think a lot in my car which is probably why I miss exits frequently, but I get a lot of ideas. I start to think about different things I want to do. But most of it's drawing though. And then a lot of, I have like a whole room full of sculptures I've abandoned. So I start one, down one road and then can't do it. I can't see, wait to see those. <laughs> uh, is there another question? Yes. Um, We've got a mic. I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but it occurred to me, since you've known each other for so long, you were talking about how when you look at work in a show, you see your own work differently when it's in a different space. I'm wondering, would it be possible for each of you to say something about, that you see in one of the other, of the three of you's work that you've known, how it's changed from when you first knew each other to where it is now? Something that you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, something that you see in this show. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to put you out. You don't have, you know, yeah. just, you know, you've known each other so long and I'm sure followed developments in each other's work. And I'd, I'd sort of be interested to hear any little insight you have about where that's come from. <laughs> that, that's too hard. I, got, I'm you. I can withdraw the question. <laughs> I, was, I was just telling them who you are. Oh. Tell me when you think. <laughs> I hope this is okay to say. I feel like all of us, you can see the, the work from grad school and how it set the foundation for, for what we're doing now, but it just seems like we're more confident about what we're doing or it's clearer. Like the message, not the message or the ideas, it just, it just it, I feel like it's more 
it's stronger. stronger. So you see, you yeah. feel like the work of each of you has more like authority and Definitely. and presence. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Like we're like all leaning in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think the same thing. I think. Um, I mean, all of the work looking at Chris's and Sachi's, I mean, it's, it's the same person. It's just like when you see someone you haven't seen them in a while, you're like, oh, yeah, like it hasn't changed that much. But, yeah, I agree that it's definitely like I think there's a power to it and a confidence. Um, but, yeah, I think I think you've been the same. Like the way you talk has been exactly the same for 25 years, how many <laughs> long time I've known you. Just it's just beautiful. It's just like, um, yeah, very inspiring. Both, both I change, you never noticed. <laughs> yeah, I say, um, I think for our work, because actually um, Kayla, we, we met each other sometimes, but Sachi, we, we see this, like uh, after 20 years or 23 years, the, today we are first met. So, uh, because this show, we, we kind of reunion together. But I, I know her work since I was graduate school, and I like her, her wood cuts, I mean, the wood sculpture. And then I tell her, I notice she used color. Now she put the, the sculpture to, into color. So, that's, that's a big change. But also, uh, her work um, is more, uh, I think it's more her personal flavor. Like before, you know, this is a woodcut. But now it's more, uh, you, you know, that's, that's Sachi. Like uh, her personal style develop. I mean, it's mature and uh, very, make, make people want to close it. Like close to watch. So that's why they hire a girl to protect that sculpture, yeah. So otherwise, they were knocked down, no. And about Kayla, I think uh, when we was in, we are one year different. I'm uh, one year uh, before you, and I, I always, I, I think I like her work when she was in graduate school, yeah. So we, we kind of like using similar uh, uh, a way to, 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 to do the painting in color, foam, something like that, yeah. Just, uh, but, but her way is more uh, like Bernard, like a softer. Mine may be like a Matisse or Phil Gustin, like a more harsh, not harsh. Hard edges? Yeah, more, more, more like a clear or Hard something. Edges. Yeah, more, 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 maybe graph. I don't know how to, how to, how to say. That's up to John. You do the critique. But uh, you all pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. You are the only one giving me a minus. I'm all a straight. So we have red socks this year, are you? Really? Uh, I'm speechless. I'm never speechless. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, like, I like that question very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the things I noticed in, the, in each of their work uh, over the 20 years is that it has had a through line, absolutely. But I think you get to a point in your career as an artist where you're like, this is what I'm doing. You know, here it is, I'm doing this. And you know, and you can see it. it. And Chris, you know, her paintings are right there. She's done. She's good. She's solid. And that's the way we talk too. You know, you know exactly where you stand with her. There, there's, you feel like those paintings are, are could be nothing else. You know, and I think Kayla's works are often exploratory, and that they're they're questioning and searching, and they evolve over time. And you can see if you look really closely at her painting, you can get a sense of this exploration for each piece. So each piece has this kind of life of its own, you know? And Sachi's work, the addition of color has just been astounding, you know? It gives it a whole new depth. And, you know, it's interesting because the old rap against painting sculpture was that it made it all about surface, right? But 
Saatchi's work is already about surface. All that carving, all that, you know, the, the, the chisel work, right? It's chisel, right? Yeah. Yeah. The chisel work, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, the surfaces are so activated. There's a mark of every decision you've made. And the colors are not overwhelming that. They're participating in that. And so I think what I see in each of you is this kind of wonderful, like, this is what I do. And I'm comfortable in this skin. And, uh, you know, there's no... Know, there's no anything that you could add to these works anymore. They're, they're fully done, they're all baked, they're fantastic. And um, I just want to live with all of them. Can, can I come live here? Can I just come <laughs> like, sleep in the galleries? Because this is my new happy place. Do we have time for another question? Is there another question? I think it's time to party. <laughs> thank you all very much, and thank you to the artists.